So this is my 1990 Sea Sport Skipper, 1900. It's 19 feet long, it's eight feet wide. It's powered by a Vortec 4.3 liter V6, around 205 horsepower. It's got a uh, Volvo Penta 290 single prop on it. I picked it up in Washington North Issaquah, I believe. And this is my little project. It needs a bit of work, it needs some cleaning, cut polishing, sanding, it needs some bottom paint. Uh, it was owned by one family for about 30 years. And the third generation wanted to sell it. That's where I come in. As you can see, it's got a uh, Volvo Penta 290 single prop. A little old and tarnished, but it was recently rebuilt, so it's in good shape, although it doesn't look that way. It's got a 9.9 .9 kicker, swim step. And this is what it looks like up inside the cockpit. Pretty good size for a 19 foot boat with a pilot house and a cuddy cabin. Here's looking at the back of it. You can see there's heavy oxidation on uh, the cabin um, around the edges here. Um, but I did take a little bit of time and I ended up polishing the roof and it does clean up pretty nicely, uh, but it's a lot of elbow grease. I can see the cockpit looking to the stern. This is the engine in here. This is the Vortec V6, 4.3 liter. Basically a uh, Chevy 350 minus two cylinders. Carbureted, runs pretty dang good. It has about 24 hours on it. Uh, freshwater uh, closed cooling system. Overall not a bad little unit. got a 50 gallon fuel tank so going into the pilot house which for a 19 foot boat is extremely rare we see we've got the helm station on the starboard side and then L settee on the port side with a little dinette table that folds out uh, it's just like so nice little place to you know eat lunch or dinner or breakfast whatever V-berth, not extremely huge, but it is comfortable to sleep in. Right now I've got this panel down, working on a little bit of a wiring project at the, this weekend. Um, but the, the boat's well designed, well made. Um, here we've got some storage underneath the helm there. Down here we've got a five gallon, five or 10 gallon water tank in there that services this little sink. Um, some people put a stove right there. Uh, I don't have one there. I probably won't put one there. Putting that down. Turning to the other side, we have the dinette. More storage in that compartment. And uh, maybe about six foot two of headroom in here. We've got this drop down little ceiling. Uh, it needs a little bit of staining, sanding, whatever may have you. Um, Currently, right now, I'm working on installing a new radio, uh, this ICOM M330. When I bought the boat, it had a GPS unit, a fish finder, a CB radio, and a VHF radio. So there's wiring and just everything everywhere. And all of that electronic equipment was original 1990 equipment. Um, now, the radio's antennas on the roof have been cut off and removed. I don't have those, so I'll be replacing with just a single VHF with a 8-foot uh, Shakespeare antenna. Uh, that I'll be putting right, probably right about here. So, kind of out of the way with the microphone to the side here, which I think should work out pretty well. Uh, I'm going to put this... VHF on a piece of starboard up probably half an inch, three quarters of an inch, so it's got a little better visibility for me to press those bottom buttons and it's not gonna push this cord down on the side. 
um, but I'll probably take down the drop down ceiling to plumb the antenna wires up to the roof on this side. Um, and while I'm there, I'll take off all the wiring for the old VHF for the CB radio and uh, see what I can do. I may or may not put the ceiling back up. I've seen some skippers with it, some without, uh, but we'll see what happens. Um, to wire this radio, um, um, there's no bus bar or anything like that. I believe all the electronics ran straight to the battery um, that have been in the boat for 30 years. So I'm gonna do more or less the same thing. Probably want run a uh, 12 gauge wire through there to the batteries and have some sort of distribution bus bar something um, in here where I can hook up and have a fused block uh, for the radio and then a uh, newer fish finder when I get the opportunity or when I get the cash. Uh, but that's, that's the project for today. As you can see, you know, it's very spacious for a 19 foot boat. You know, I've had several 17s, 15s, 18s, this is my first 19 foot boat and the deck, uh, the manufacturer says it's six feet by seven feet across. Um, so it is pretty large, you know, make it be, maybe fish three people comfortably back here. You've got your troller engine that's splattered with, uh, wax from previous projects, uh, battery charger, uh, battery tender, I should say. Um, and then one thing I'm not a huge fan of is this saltwater wash down system they've got. It just goes right down the side of the rails and then back down there, there's a bilge pump or a pump down by that trim tab all the way down there. And then it comes to the hose here um, with the end somewhere being there. Now, what I don't like about this is there's a switch right here and that turns the pump on or off regardless of whether the battery cutoff uh, is on or off. Um, another project I gotta do this weekend is replace the batteries. Um, it's, it looks like someone's replaced them several times or they were good in 03, 04, 05, 07. This is the next, last time it was new. I don't see a date on these ones yet, but let you know if I do find a date on those but overall it's a really handy you know, little boat for what I paid for it um, I'm really happy with it the previous boat to this was well uh, my two previous boats before this boat were one a 17 foot uh, Arima Sea Ranger from 1996 and I put a brand new 2022 Honda 90 on it and it was awesome um, and then I also had a 14 foot Livingston like a 2006 or 2004 model the coho package so it was the the bees knees the deluxe uh, model that they offered with a uh, similar year uh, Tohatsu four stroke so it was a fast quick fun lightweight boat uh, but interestingly I got an unsolicited offer to buy that boat for uh, about $2,000 less than what I paid for this. So I sold the Livingston, threw in two grand and bought this. So you can decipher for yourself if this was boat was really good deal or if I sold the Livingston for a really good deal or uh, both. Uh, I think more of both. Uh, but I like this design. I love the steps here. Really nice for getting in and out of the boat. I love the storage lockers and the storage uh, shelves down on each side. Um, really convenient for buoys, ropes. When I bought the boat, he had probably about 15, 16 quarts of oil. Um, all of the AMS oil or PENS oil uh, on either shelf. Um, apparently he uh, had PENS oil running through the guy's uh, veins. So there was that. I have a, a crab pot puller here or the base of it at least. I don't have the uh, the actual puller unit. Um, I had downrigger mounts right here. Uh, I decided to pull those off just to make this smooth. And I know you're saying smooth, you know, this is not smooth, but it was up about an inch. So this is a lot better than it was. I need to wet sand, polish, do something with that, make that a lot better. 
uh, but I'll take you to the front of the boat. It's nice, there's handrails here for when you're at the dock, but there's also handrails here uh, for when you're going up to the front. It's about in the front of the cabin where you have to step over this one to step onto the top of the cabin. You get into the bathtub here. I've got a little Danforth fluke anchor. I think I've got 60 feet of chain on it right now. Um, and then looking back towards the stern again, we have a window that goes into the cuddy and the two uh, backwards facing uh, pilot house windows with wipers on each side. Um, we've got an interesting creative horn solution over here with some galvanized sheet metal. I don't know how long that will stay there, um, but it works. Not a high priority of mine at the moment. We have this uh, Pelco or something radar unit. Um, the Pelco. I haven't tried it out yet, but I'll probably leave the wiring uh, for that unit and you keep the unit because it is still hooked up. Um, it is still there and I, I don't want to go through the pain of removing the actual unit. So I'll probably just keep it if it works. If it doesn't work, I'll clip all the wiring and probably just you leave the unit. A decent sized swim step, you know, goes across three quarters of the length of the beam or the, the beam with the uh, Yamaha on the uh, bracket here. I think the end goal is if anything happens to the uh, Vortec in there, which is unlikely as it only has 20 something hours and was installed you know, a couple years ago. Um, I would love to put an outboard on this boat with a bracket, uh, maybe in the 200 horsepower range. Um, I'm very fond of Hondas. Um, but I'd consider maybe a, a Yamaha or a, a Suzuki, depending on uh, what's priced competitively and uh, what features they have. Uh, but to get this boat, we went to Washington on a Friday afternoon about three o'clock, drove through the night, got to the Seattle area around 10 in the morning the following day on Saturday. And uh, we picked up the boat around noon and then drove back through the night again, back to Southern California. Um, and as you can see, it didn't go uh, perfectly according to plan. This one, we stopped for uh, dinner on Saturday and uh, realized the tire, I don't know what happens, but it wears differently and there's high spots in the tread from this side to this side. Um, and we had two spares with us for this trip. So uh, two spares that we purchased in addition to the boat. And we replaced this one in the parking lot, uh, somewhere in the middle of Washington. And then we made it all the way down to Paso Robles area. And we had a blowout on the starboard side. And uh, I would say that's a catastrophic tire failure. Um, and unfortunately, I love the galvanized wheels um, for their utility. But this one's a little bent. I'm not sure if that can be salvaged, um, but I'll probably wrap this one in new rubber. So the trailer is original to 1990, I believe. Um, it's an easy loader, single axle. I believe it's got a 52 or 5,100 pound axle. Rollers, which if you have had rollers and bunks, depending on where you live, rollers suck. They're absolutely terrible. They're dangerous, they're a liability. You have to have safety chains everywhere. Um, and they're no easier to load or unload the boat.